want to look at how do we effectively build an atmosphere in our writing. Last week you were looking at showing, not telling, so thinking about how to describe a setting. And the word choices that you were choosing last week uh, would have created an, an atmosphere, okay? Now this week we are deliberately thinking about choosing specific words to create an atmosphere. So firstly we'll look at what an atmosphere is and then we'll think about how to create an atmosphere in our own writing. So um, here are some examples of different atmospheres. You might have a sinister atmosphere, so it could be quite dark and scary, similar to an ominous atmosphere, that idea that something bad might happen, foreboding. Um, a magical or futuristic atmosphere could be created, an excitable and funny atmosphere, or maybe a sombre and depressing atmosphere. Um, and essentially, an atmosphere is the overall feeling created in the text. It's the feeling passed on to the reader. Atmosphere is a bit of a strange one because it's difficult to define, but you know an atmosphere when you've read it. For example, when you read um, a scary story in a, in a horror book, you will feel scared or you might feel scared and tense as the reader. Now you know that perhaps a sinister atmosphere has been created there through the word choices that the writer has used. How do you create an atmosphere in a scene? Well, essentially, it's gonna come down to the choices and word choices that you are making. Every word choice you make can create the atmosphere that you want. And you need to craft your writing to develop that atmosphere. So if you're describing a scene, you need to think about what is there, so the nouns that you're going to be describing, what's actually happening in that scene, so the actions that are happening, describing the scene, so what adjectives you're going to use, and how are the actions happening, so are you going to use particular adverbs um, to create that atmosphere. Every word you choose should have a purpose. Your first task this week is um, to create an atmosphere using this template. So we've got um, a girl presumably staring out of the window, um, looking at a park and it's describing the setting, it's describing the fields where she, nearby where she lives that she can look out onto um, and describing the sunshine and the leaves. So this scene, when I think of it, um, it can be adaptable. So your first task is to look at this and, and choose word choices to make, for example, this an ominous extract or an excitable extract. Um, and the way you're going to do that is through the language choices you are making. So let's have a look. The first thing that you can do is to picture the scene in your head. So let's think about an ominous atmosphere to start with. And this is a type of thing I'm picturing. So I literally typed into Google scary playground and, and this image came up and I thought, yeah, that's what I was imagining in my head. If I had an ominous atmosphere and I wanted to create that, the fog coming in, so it's quite dark and mysterious. It looks isolated so no one's really on it. Um, the colors are dark and, and, and they lack life. And it seems quite a desolate and bleak place and you wouldn't want to go there and hang out on that day. So that's the type of image I've got in my mind and that's a good place to start. The next thing I need to do is think about the language choices I'm making. So I'll explain why I've chosen these specific language choices. Every word in red is the word that I've added in to make this an ominous atmosphere. Gretchen stared anxiously out of the murky window. So anxiously, I want the reader to feel anxious. And the only way I'm going to do that is by describing the characters to replicate those feelings. So if Gretchen is worried and scared about looking out the window, already it sets the mood there and the atmosphere to be quite ominous, the idea that something bad might happen. And it's the same with using that adjective murky. You can't see clearly, something could be lurking outside. So if I said uh, out of the transparent window, um, it would be clear that you could see everything. Something might not be hiding, it's less mysterious. So I've deliberately chosen murky there. The silent fields lay restless and nervous. 
So describing the fields to be restless, and nervous, personifying these um, these nouns, the fields here, is really important because it helps create that I idea that something bad might happen. And it's not just happening to the people, it's almost as if the environment can feel that something's going to happen. The fields themselves are almost like a living thing that can anticipate this bad thing occurring. The deadly sunshine filtered through the clouds and the helpless leaves were like prey on the ground. So once again, using this simile here, to describe the leaves as being like prey, helpless, an attack is going to happen at any moment, or it could happen. I'm almost creating that anticipation there. She could make out the abandoned play park in the distance with the swings trembling in the wind. Now, you can see the adjective I've used here and the verb I've used here. The adjective abandoned is um, specifically chosen because I think, if you think logically about it, if something bad is going to happen, I think uh, my automatic instinct is to think about it happening when no one else is around. And, and, and um, if it's lo lots of people there, um, maybe rightfully or wrongfully, I think it, um, I get the impression that it's a place where everybody would like to be. Whereas if it's abandoned and nobody uses it, you get the idea that you shouldn't use it or there's a reason why it's abandoned. And then once again, personifying the, wing, the swings there, they're trembling, so they are scared themselves. So hopefully you can see, just by using different words relating to that idea of fear, I can create um, an ominous atmosphere. Now, one thing that I think is useful, and we'll come back to this um, in a second, is using thesauruses. So if I go here, and I go on uh, a thesaurus, I can just type in fear, and then there's lots of words um, that you might be able to use in relation to that topic. Or you could type in, for instance, if I typed in joyous, and then there's different words here. Now, not all of the words will be appropriate, but if you've got a thesaurus at home, you can think about using different synonyms um, and have all of these words associated with that atmosphere, and it could give you a really good place to start. Now, let's have a look here and uh, go back to thinking about how to create an atmosphere. Now, a second atmosphere you could create um, and, and might choose is an excitable atmosphere um, in this, this passage. So I'm thinking in my head and picturing something like this, something that there's more people around, it's a bright sunny day, um, but also, at this time, it, it, it's something that you want to be a part of, and, and the key character here would want to go and join in. So, I've changed the word choices. I've actually kept this one the same, anxiously, so I think it's important to think about how words can be interpreted differently in different contexts. So yes, last time I said stared anxiously out of the open window, Anxiously, you could be nervous or worried, and that's what I was intending in the last one. But hopefully in the context of context of this whole passage, you can see that she's anxious to go out and, and, and play at that play park. She's anxious because she's in fear of not being out and enjoying herself. So the same word can create a completely different atmosphere. Gretchen stared anxiously out of the open window. The luscious fields lay green and inviting. So I want to make it seem welcoming and as if the character would be distraught if they couldn't be a part of it. So using that adjective luscious and, and, and the colours, and I'm really trying to describe the, the, the scene here. The long awaited sunshine as if she's been stuck inside for ages and now the sun has finally come out. The long-awaited sunshine filtered through the clouds and the precious leaves were like jewels on the ground. Now, if you look outside and you see that the, the leaves look absolutely amazing and they're like jewels, they're so precious, it's almost like she wants to get out there and, and, and be amongst it and, and, and see them with her own eyes, be close to them. She could make out the amazing play park in the distance with the swings swaying in the wind.
So no longer is it abandoned. It's amazing. And they're not trembling anymore. They are swaying. It's more of a relaxed mo movement. It's calm. Um, and it's almost no, no longer are the objects scared. They almost seem friendly and inviting. So just by choosing different word choices here, it completely changes the atmosphere. OK, so remember, every word choice you make can create a different atmosphere. So it'll be interesting to see how you get on with this task and the other tasks this week. And you can build, hopefully, a su successful atmosphere in your own writing. Thank you, Year 7.